We're going to now move into building out our gulp file. So the first thing we want to do is put a gulp file out here in basically the project area rather than the source file area. So I'm going to create this new file and call it gulp file.js. And you can see here it went inside of our source. So if I close that, it's hidden. Just drag that out here and make sure that's all good. And it is. So the file name is important. You do need to call it gulp file.js so gulp can recognize it. And in regards to our folder structure, basically anything project related, kind of metadata related, goes out here. We have the source, and that's where our actual web files are going to go that have to do with displaying information up onto the website or the kind of dependencies the website might need. But while we're developing, these files out here are basically environment related, meta related. So that's how the folder structure is going to work as we go through our other different projects as well. This is going to kind of be a template. Okay, so inside of the sculpt file, I'm going to create some variables to grab the dependencies that we're going to need. So var gulp, and this is going to use JavaScript syntax because we are in a JavaScript file, so this ought to look familiar. So the first one here is going to be gulp. Then we're going to create another variable and call it browser sync. We're going to do a require. We're going to get browser sync. And we want to call create. Then we're going to do sass. And this is going to be gulp sass. Remember, we downloaded that earlier in our command line. All right, so we have all our dependencies now that we're going to need. The first thing we're going to do is create a gulp task. See, the autocomplete is coming through here. All right, so inside of this one, this is going to be compilation for our sass. We're going to give it a name, so I'll just call it compile sass. Create a function for this, and this is where we're going to start chaining together some different functionality. So we're going to return out of this basically everything that we're going to do next. And this right here is going to be where is it that we're going to get the files that we need to do the different kinds of compilations. So the first one, we're going to create an array. So there's going to be two different um, sources that we're going to have here. The first one is going to be node modules, boot strap, and scss, and then boot strap dot scss. And let's see, we want this inside of quotes, single quotes. All right, so we're going to have another location, which is going to be our own. So that's going to be where we're adding in our own CSS, or SCSS in this case, and save. So if I were to go to this path, you would find this file there inside of this node module. So down here in Bootstrap, we can see this going on. You can see Browser Sync is there as a dependency. And here we are. And if I scroll down, you can see these all have the underscore in front of them. This is the one right here. And all it's doing is a bunch of imports, creating all the different dependencies for Bootstrap and its SAS files. Okay, so then we have some more that we need to do here. And I am going to remove that space down here. We're chaining again off of this. This is going to be a pipe and basically the functionality, which is SAS. I'm going to do another pipe. And this is different commands, so we're chaining everything together as we go. We're going to do a gulp dot destination. So where are we putting these files? So the way it's working is get these files, compile them using SAS, and then drop them here. So we're going to have SC or, or SRC, and then we're going to do CSS because the output is going to be a dot CSS file. All right, then we're going to do another pipe. And finally, we're going to call browser sync, so the injection for the browser in this case, and stream. So that is our first task. All right, so next what we're going to do is move our JavaScript files. So we're going to do a gulp.task. You might wonder, why don't we just put all those files in their location? Like we're taking this, why don't we just put it in here? We're about to move some JavaScript files again out of this node modules bootstrap um, and jQuery files and tether. So why don't we just move all that now and put it into their proper location? So here's the thing about that. We have this very large node modules folder. 
And when you're working with teams, um, often executables, things like that, third-party files, you may not want to check into your source control. And also, you have to, if you want to take this project and move it around, you've got to drag this large folder with you. The way we're doing it now is a new developer comes on, they download the source code, they don't have to download this node modules, they'll just run a few commands, so npm install, that's going to get all the dependencies, put everything on their machine, and that way they're not dragging this around every single time. And then they just run this file right here, and it's going to move everything into the proper locations, and they'll be set up and ready to go. So now what we're going to do is create a new task for removing JavaScript files. So we're going to call this move.js. And we're going to do another function. These really follow similar types of patterns as we go through them. So again, a return, a gulp, source. And this time we're going to take three different files and move them into our JavaScript folder, the one we created inside of our source files. This is going to be an array again. And the first one I want is node modules bootstrap out of distribution JS and we're going to have bootstrap.min.js. That's our first one. We're going to do another similar one here. So we're going to have node, get that hint out of the way, modules, and we're going to get tether. So we can go ahead and look and Make sure these paths are correct. Let's see, close this up and go down to Tether, which is all the way down here. All right, so if I open up Tether, what we're looking for is a Tether JS or a min, and that's going to actually be, let's see, if we open up our distribution, our JS. This is the one we want, the minified one, which is going to be fine because we're not actually going to be de debugging any kind of Tether, so we don't need to worry about getting the full source of all that. The minif minified one is going to work just fine. So we'll do a distribution JS and we're going to have tether.min.js. And there's one more, which is I'm going to do our quotes here. This is going to be jQuery. So we'll go back into no modules and we can look at the tree again, but I'm just going to go ahead and type this out and it's going to have a distribution folder in it. It should be jQuery.man.js. And let's see here. Go ahead and close this up. Go back up here. And scroll down to the J's. Look for jQuery. Here we go. And open up the distribution. And then you can see here our file. So looks like we have everything correct on this part here. Those are our source files, so we're going to go ahead and start chaining these commands to get these moved over. So we're going to call a gulp.destination. We don't need to worry about compilation, so this step is not there. Nothing um, before destination in this case. We're just going to go ahead and start the move. It's going to go into our JS folder. And we're going to have one more pipe. This, again, is going to work with our injection into the browser. So we're going to call browser sync stream save all right so we're going to have um two more tasks one is going to be another big task the other the last one is going to be just a single line so this one right here is going to launch our server so we're going to call it launch server and then we're going to call some other tasks to run so we're going to have our compile sass and we're also going to create a function here and let's see my braces. All right. So we're going to do browser sync init. And let's see, like this. And we're going to have a function in there. And we're going to do server. And we're going to call it right from source. And let's see. I think I need to close this here. All right. So we're going to call a watch as well. This is going to watch for any changes. And if that happens, it's going to go ahead, do the compilation, basically reload things. So we're going to create an array, and we're going to do node modules. It's going to go back to our bootstrap file here, and we're going to put that here. Then we are also going to do that compilation again. Let's see 
here. And we want to call the compile as well. So we're gonna do compile sass, and we need to put that in quotes. Okay, so that one closes out. We're gonna do one more wedge. This one here is gonna to be to reload our HTML. Let's see, we'll have a source, star.html. So we make code changes there. We're gonna call a change, call browser sync, and reload. All right, so now we have the single line that we're gonna do here so that we can just type in gulp at the command line and run all of this. So that'll save us a lot of time and ensure everything actually executes. So we're gonna do remove JS. We'll do a launch server and save. All right, so what I wanna do next is go ahead and comment, do some good comments inside of here. We're gonna go ahead and try it out and make sure everything is working as well. And we'll see how to do that in our next video. Last we left off, we completed our gulp file. So what I wanna do now is add in some commenting to these different sections, and we're also gonna try and give this a run. There may be a little bit of debugging we have to do because there's quite a bit of code in here and a lot of opportunity to make some syntax errors. So we'll see what happens um, when we try to get this to run. But the first thing I wanna do is start down here where we have our launch server. So a lot of this is fairly descriptive. Um, because of the names that they were given. So this task here, we can see that it does compile SAS, and it's not that complex. So we gather the locations we want to compile, run it through the compiler, drop it there, and then we have our browser injection. So we have the browser injection there as well. And again, the descriptive naming is really helpful. So everything goes into this function. And the first thing we do, grab the sources that we want, we have three in this case, and we're gonna drop them here. So destination, source, destination, makes it really simple to understand. So not really much to comment there because there's not a lot going on actually. But down here, I'm just gonna break up into comments, the different things that are going on. So we have run sass when server runs, and the next thing is gonna be run server, and we're gonna watch for any changes in source scss folder and reload the browser. So if we make any changes there um, in our source code, it'll get reflected into our browser, and which is gonna help our workflow quite a bit because we don't have to go back and relaunch the server, or go and refresh the browser or anything like that. And we're going to, as well, watch for HTML changes. So that is what all this section here is doing. And we can see we had the two watches, so we're watching for our SAS, and then we're watching for our HTML. And we're going to trigger this right here when that happens. So if the SAS changes, if the source code changes, we're gonna run that compile task. Okay, so down here, just to come in about what we're doing, we're gonna run gulp. It's going to run this file. We're going to launch server browser. And let's see, I need to add some comments. And then execute JS task. Just save that. Okay, so that should be it. And before we run this, I can see right here there's a brace. I don't think that should be there. It's right here. So that is by itself like that embraces. And I'm gonna save that and let's try a run. All right, so I'm gonna bring this to our other browser that's more self-contained. All right, so there we go. And we can see the fonts are there. So now everything's running through our local versions. And if I inspect, we can take a look at that. Um, all right, so up here in the head, you can see here everything is local. And if we go down here, we can see these are all local as well. So Gulp is doing what we want it to do. And we can go back into Visual Studio Code and just take a look at what happened here. So we just ran the Gulp command, and that went through. And you can see our tasks are running. It's giving us a time that it's taking for those to run. So fairly quick. And then we have our server here 
uh, that we're going to launch on port 3000. And let's go and look at our folders as well. I'm going to close this node modules. You can see we've got the three files that we wanted are now inside of the JS folder. And if we look in our CSS, we have our style folder. So let's just look at that. This is the styling that was output through the compilation, which matches also what we have over here. So all the, the variables were replaced with their actual values, and we have that output now. So if we were to go over here, go into our style, and add something new to this just to see the output again. So for example, we might change the background. So we would add a new variable. We'll just do a BG color, and we can do a green. Then down here, we're going to want to put that in. So we're going to do background, and let's do BG color, save. All right, so that is a change. And you can see here that some compilation ran. What we want to do now is take a look and see, because this should have changed in the browser. Remember, the way that we've set this up is we have these watches that are going on here. And then we have the injection for the browser, reload. And so let's just take a look and see. And we can see, and went back over here to this one, but we can see that change is there now for the background. So we know Gulp is running, doing what we want it to do. And it's going to make our task as we move forward to keep everything in line fairly simple. So again, we don't want to change the style.css because it's going to get overwritten by whatever we're doing in this style.scss. So this is where we're going to do all of our CSS, even if it's regular CSS, we're going to do it in here anyway. Um, so again, we have the option to use SAS. And if we don't want to use it, we still need to stay inside of this SAS file to do any kind of cascading style sheet work. All right, so now we have our hello world working. We have gulp working. Everything is up and running for our project, our hello world project. This is actually going to be a template. So basically what that means is we can take everything except this node modules, zip it up, put it somewhere, and whenever we create a new project, we just unzip it, we have a project, we're ready to go. So that's the way that can work moving forward. All right, so what we're going to do now is we can start getting into the various projects that we're going to be working on throughout the course.